fact. Uh, <laughs> okay. Second yeah. fact, the Business Daily. Uh, front page story here, how Israel Hamas war will hit Kenya. Further fuel price increases looming. Disruptions of trade with the Middle East expected. This has been penned by Charles Mwaniki. Let's uh, just take a look at the first few paragraphs. They read, the war between Israel and Palestinian group Hamas is set to hit Kenya with fresh economic pain as oil prices rise on concerns of destabilized Middle East and the potential threatening of the dollar against the shilling as investors run to the safe haven of the U.S. economy. The conflict, which broke out two weeks ago, is threatening to draw more actors in the Middle East, which is the main source of Kenya's fuel imports, as well as a key export destination of food and animal products. Uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, Dr. Gidwa, but how hard do you expect this to hit us? I mean, if the wider Middle East gets into the conflict, definitely they will have the rest of for example, a lot of beef gets exported to the Middle East. Fuel, that's where we get uh, most of our fuel from. Remember, we already have an existing government-to-government -government deal on fuel in Kenya. So yeah, if it, the wider Middle East gets affected, we're looking at trade routes getting affected, and just global inflation, basically, because fuel is the biggest driver of most economies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, Professor Bidamba, this has been an emotive issue one on which people have taken hard stands yeah, and yeah. and <laughs> i generally try and avoid it because i don't want to have anybody cancelled uh let's say for you know you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um but uh, do you see any resolution in sight uh well, um i spend a lot of time in israel i've also uh spent a lot of time with the Arabs, uh, you know, and this uh, issue I really focus on. Um, there was a conference that uh, took place at Hebrew University where I was there, um, both Arabs and uh, Palestinian, uh, Arabs and, uh, yes, and uh, 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 Israelis and Palestinians. And when you were in, you couldn't think there was any problem. Uh, they're unanimous. We need a resolution. We need peace. But there are so many elements to this whole thing um, that, that are, are they're extremists on both sides. And the extremists on both sides don't want peace. And it is biblical, went back as far as you can read the Bible. Uh, we know uh, what needs to happen is a two-state solution. That's the thing that needs to happen, because one option is to have one state where the Israelis and Arab live peacefully together. That will not happen. Uh, Two-state solution, Yasser Arafat, uh, before he died, uh, Isaac Rabin, and Bill Clinton sitting and signing the Oslo Accord. That's where we need to go. And there is no shortcut to it. Otherwise, this carnage will continue to happen. What I tell my Israel's friends is you cannot keep Palestinian in this large jail uh, for long because you are creating extremists after extremists. Uh, their option now is to go and eliminate all Hamas fighters. Yes, you eliminate them. What about the ones that are coming and the ones that are coming? And so it will never be solved. The danger to us and to the rest of the world <coughs> is a trigger for world war. Because you are looking at Iran very critically, you're looking at Russia and the role they're playing very critically, and you're looking at response, massive response from the US and Western countries. And so any time it can trigger this big thing, which is called the Third World War, and the Third World War is like no any other war that we have seen and read about in history. It should never happen, uh, but it can happen. Uh, so apart from food, uh, you know, and, and all other human needs, the whole world will be impacted and disrupted. And here in Africa, uh, we are helpless uh, when it comes. And so uh, we're all working hard you know, behind the scenes, 
uh, to make sure the Israelis uh, stop moving in uh, the equipment into the area. Uh, there are roughly, right now, about 2,000 Israelis dead. Uh, there are many more uh, Palestinians who are dead. What about if you kill 600,000 Palestinians? Uh, you know, there are about 2 million in that place. If you kill 6,000, 600,000, and then go back to the Germany, where 6 million Israelis were exterminated, which is which? Who win what? And so um, I listened last night to Isaac Rabin, who is a highly decorated uh, war veteran and was prime minister at one time. He said, you cannot go and kill all uh, Hamas. You can eliminate the fighters. Yes, you can figure out where they are. But there will be others coming. So basically, Sakra Bin is going back to Oslo Accord. We must have solution. And that, is, that will solve this one forever. All right. I just want to acknowledge that we've been joined. Uh, and thank you for that, Prof. Insight. Mm. Um, uh, sorry, Nasongo uh, Muliro, karibu sana. Before I come to you on this, uh, I know I'm putting everybody on the spot with this one. Uh, let's uh, cross over uh, to New York where we have Professor David uh, Monda on standby. So I was scrolling through my Instagram feed over the weekend, uh, Prof Monda, and I saw um, Biden, President Joe Biden, uh, attempt to walk a fine line um, on this issue as much as the U.S. Uh, has stated, stated that they, they're, according to this report on the front page of uh, the Daily Nation, that uh, their quote, uh, they are bolstering their forces in the Middle East to assist in the defense of the U.S. ally uh, Israel amid escalations by Iran and its proxy forces. Um, uh, let me see, but some of what he said over uh, the weekend, you know, so, uh, just to quote, we cannot and will not let terrorists like Hamas and tyrants like Putin win. I refuse to let that happen. Uh, but he also stated uh, that uh, for the people of, uh, let me see, the people of uh, Palestine, uh, that aid should be allowed into the area. Let me see. As I scroll for that, uh, what do you make of uh, the U.S. position on this issue, given the insight that has been given by Professor Noah Midamba that it's an issue on which the international players need to tre tread carefully lest they uh, inflame the situation further. Professor Monda? Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm a little more skeptical on the um, capacity of uh, the current Netanyahu uh, coalition government to generate peace in the Middle East. And I say that from two angles. Firstly, uh, the current Netanyahu regime is uh, extremely ideological. It's the most right-wing government in Israel's history. And I think you'll remember even before the Hamas bombings, there were big demonstrations from the opposition that Netanyahu was going about changing the constitution to give his right-wing government more power. Let's also not forget that a lot of the coalition partners in this uh, current Israeli coalition are very right-wing pro-settler groupings. So as uh, Prof. Midimba has mentioned, the Oslo Accords envisaged a two-state solution, one for Arabs and one for Israelis. However, the current geography in the Middle East, at least in Israel and the occupied territories, cannot envisage a Palestinian state simply because the uh, occupied areas have been taken over by Jewish settlers and uh, Israel still uh, controls the Gaza, uh, the West Bank, the Golan Heights, and even areas of East Jerusalem, which are supposed to be Palestinian. So the multiple UN resolutions have actually asked for, for a settlement for us to go back to the 1967 boundaries. And I do not see the current right-wing administration in, um, in Israel actually uh, moving towards that. The second element of uh, my statement as to why I'm skeptical about peace is the Biden policy towards Israel. And this is not just the Biden administration. Historically, U.S. administrations have generally been very much um, biased towards Israel, very much pro-Israel as a central core 
to American foreign policy, whether it was Biden, whether it's uh, Trump, whether it's Obama, all the way back to 1948 with the uh, creation of Israel. And I say that to say this, because Biden was seen to be more of a moderate rather, rather than a, a war hawk like Trump. Uh, he wasn't as right wing. But the problem is when the Biden administration gives $10 billion to Israel in military aid, that doesn't incentivize the Israelis to stop shooting because they're being given more weapons. So there's not an incentive to want to create peace. And I think that's very problematic. I think, secondly, you alluded to Biden's speech, and he made this speech to the country uh, a few days ago, and he really tried to reconstruct that equivocation between Hamas and Israel's conflict in the Middle East and Ukraine's aggression with, um, excuse me, Russia's aggression towards Ukraine. But the contradiction here then for some of Biden's critics would be uh, Biden criticizes uh, Russia, a big country, for invading and occupying Ukraine, a smaller country, whereas uh, critics of the Biden administration would say Israel has done the exact same thing to the Palestinians. It's occupied and continues to occupy multiple areas of, of the Palestinian land. And what Hamas did was wrong. Israel has a right to self-defense like every nation state. But under the current environment, it just doesn't look plausible that from the current coalition of Benjamin Netanyahu, there's any kind of interest for peace. There's a, a, a religious zealotry and uh, a, a, an element of wanting to revenge. But the U.S. administration has really not placed itself as a neutral arbiter towards a diplomatic solution. And I think you realize Recently, uh, Egypt and Jordan backed out of uh, a, a conference to try and bring diplomacy to the table because of the explosion in Gaza, which killed a lot of Palestinians. So there's a lot of blame to go on both sides, but the current situation doesn't look good, particularly when we think that Israel has not even started its major military intervention in Gaza, which will go door to door, which will go building to building, and it's going to get very bloody both on the side of Hamas, but also for the Israelis. All right. So uh, I know you have some, some things to add uh, here in studio as well, but we need to take a break. Then we'll come back with your thoughts. I found the quote I was looking for under the Fortas account. I was looking under the Joe Biden one. But Israelis and Palestinians, he is quoted as stating, equally deserve to live in safety, dignity, and peace. We take a break. Uh, we continue this conversation on the other side. Welcome to The Morning Fix. This is the show where we do Ukarabati wa asubuhi. My name is Mariam Bishar. And the most bankable host, Brian Aseli. Good morning, my neighbors! <laughs> get up and get ready for the most electrifying morning show on your airwaves. Your airwaves. Mariam and Aseli on The Morning Fix every weekday from 6 to 10 a.m. I think Uganda is the only country that they can actually do a musical. All of them. Because they speak mean? funny. No. They speak funny. <laughs> Only on 96.3 Nation FM. wa Kenya jina langu ni Florence Mureithi na ukitaka kupata inuka mteule kama skiza tuni yako 
uh, bonyeza star 811 star 851 hash. Skis and a nation supporting local talent. What's your relationship with pain? What's your relationship with change? What is your relationship with finances? Do you get knocked out or do you go with the punches? Kitovu cha vizazi ni baba mzazi. Unafaa kuzingatia nini kabla hujalitia guru lako ndani? Join us for the third edition of Man Cave. Tuchambue, tutadavue nyama na mdahalo wake. Maswale wanaume, peupe. And this time, we have an amazing, amazing after party session from 7 p.m. till midnight. And we'll have great music, great food, and also fireside chats. And for you guys who want to spend the night over, well, definitely, we have the plan for you. Tarehe 28, mwezi October, mwaka ilfumbili, 23. Ungana nasi hapa, all all tepes, picnic side, kwa sherehe, bab kubwa. When men meet, change happens. Introducing the East African Entrepreneurship Conference and Expo, hosted in the heart of the Democratic Republic of Congo from October 31st to November 2nd, 2023. Proudly presented by Nation Media Group. Unleash the potential of East African entrepreneurship as you connect with visionary minds, explore untapped markets, and forge lucrative trade partnerships. Whether you're poised to conquer the vibrant business landscape of the DRC or eager to expand your footprint across East Africa, Africa, this event is your gateway to success. For comprehensive details and registration, call Joanne on 0724-661-440 or email jmasika at ke.nationmedia.com. Are you ready for a challenge that could change your life? Introducing hashtag Nation Scholarship Challenge. We all know that getting an education can be tough, but we also know that a scholarship can make a huge difference. That's why Nation Media Group and Goodwill are giving you the chance to win 80,000 Kenya shillings. All you need to do is to post a video telling us why you want this scholarship and how it will help you achieve your goals. Don't forget to use the hashtag Nation Scholarship in your post. It's super easy and by taking part, you'll be part of a global community of people who are all working towards their goals. So if you're thinking about pursuing higher education or have big career aspirations, this is your chance to take a step forward. Don't wait too long, complete your good old profile and share your story with us now. All holders are notified to report and surrender unclaimed financial assets to the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, UFAA, on or before November 1, 2023. Visit www.ufaa.go.ke and get started. to you welcome to am live with me in studio we have nasongu muliro who is a an expert in the area of foreign affairs diplomacy he's just joined us uh, we also have in studio professor noami damba professor of foreign uh, policy and defense we have dr edgar gizua expert in security area, international policy diplomacy uh, and we also have joining us from across is it an ocean a pond uh, <laughs> we have dr david monda uh, who's, joining, who's a professor of political uh, science at City University in New York. And uh, yeah, we we're just finishing up, wrapping up on the Israel-Palestinian uh, issue uh, before I quickly wrap this up and then we get now into China-Africa uh, relations. Uh, Prof, you had something to add? Yes, the, uh, the issue is uh, uh, David uh, mentioned extremist. Uh, the, the Israelis uh, is led by... Netanyahu is really extremist. 
there, there are times that extremists really um, get the point. Uh, Reagan was one of the most uh, extremist uh, president of the United States. But because of Reagan, uh, the meeting that took place at Reykjavik in 1986 brought about the end of the Cold War. Uh, because Reagan united the country, uh, both extreme right and extreme left and the middle, and they were able to do that. So Netanyahu is one of uh, probably the most extremist Israeli leader. But having what has happened in recently, this is his last time to really do something on behalf of the, the state and peace in the Middle East. And maybe uh, at night when he sleep, he said, this time I'm a changed man. I'm going to do it. That's, that's our hope. Uh, that's our hope. Uh, professor, sorry, uh, Nasongo Muliro. <laughs> Today yes. I have two professors. Wananichanganisha. <laughs> 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 but uh, Nasongo Muliro, <laughs> 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 foreign policy and security specialist, uh, Glossops. Your thoughts? You know, um, thank you very much. I was just saying that, uh, discussing with Prof here, in this crisis, I think we should reach a level where, as the they say, let my people go. Because you ask yourself, for how long can you uh, suppress humanity in any form? And I like it that even the um, Americans themselves are seeing that uh, even as we focus on uh, dismantling Hamas and distinguishing it from Palestinians, we should also have a long-term thought that the path to a two-state uh, solution must be there. It must exist. And in my view that uh, <coughs> maybe, you know, we say that in every problem there is, there is an opportunity. This very violent crisis, they say it's worse than 50 years ago in 1973, mm -hmm. this time round, should be an eye-opener or a wake-up call to the international community and the world to realize that we need a genuine solution for Palestine, Israel. People know the solution, but the idea of good faith does not exist. And I think even America itself that has been holding that uh, satellite state for their own interests in the Middle East, and the Hamas that have not believed that the Israelites must exist, have realized that uh, humanity does not care about who wins in this geopolitics. What they need is what you quoted, security, dignity, and peace. You know, and I think in my view that the world must come together and smart up and put aside the geopolitical interest. They know the solution has been there, Oslo and the rest, but this is now an opportunity. And immediately, I think what we need is not to allow the conflict to get protracted. Because if we do that, then uh, as my friends have mentioned, then the world, we shall be seeing alliances and counter alliances and the world will be divided. But we hope that it will not uh, take a very long time to a level that now we will all of us be in a conundrum. You know, you are taking alliances and you are unable to uh, get out. What some people call, uh, we get into a hurting stalemate. But this is the right moment for me, in my view, for the world now to come and look in the eyes of Israel and the Palestinians and tell them that you need a long solution for the people. And I think, in my view, we must uh, clearly uh, detach Hamas from the aspirations of the Palestinian uh, uh, administration in that case there. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Gidua. Yeah. Yeah. Quickly, I, I, I'll, I'll borrow what uh, Prof. Nasongo has talked about. I think Israel will be willing to think about Palestinians absent minus Hamas. The Israelis are more comfortable with PLO leadership, with uh, President Abbas and his leadership. They will deal with such a leader. What they do not want to hear is Hamas. Unfortunately, due to divide and rule and maybe poor decision-making in the past, Hamas was allowed to grow because it has grown as Israelis watched 
and now it has gained a life of its own. But going forward, I think the Israelis are going to be willing to deal with President Abbas, all right, minus Hamas. So how that will be crafted or how that is possible will also probably depend on the Palestinians themselves. I think going forward, the Palestinians might, even though they might understand what, what Hamas was trying to do, the consequences, I think the price has been too high for them. So they would mm. rather deal with Israel and let PLO lead them into negotiations and into future mm. peace talks, minus Hamas. Hamas, I think, shot themselves in their foot, in my view. Mm. Yeah, in their quest for representing Palestinians, they overrepresented them, and now they have created this... Uh, They've led to this. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Olive, Olive, can I can I make a comment, please? Yes, uh, you can, Professor Monda. So I've I've really struggled with this question, and uh, I've had many problems in my classes, particularly over the past few months, and even in the city of New York, we've had um, a lot of demonstrations in the city. So New York City has the largest concentration of uh, mm. you know Jewish people outside of Israel, mm. but there's also a very big. Palestinian and Arab community in the United States. And what happened uh, yesterday was uh, uh, the president of a synagogue in Detroit, Michigan, was stabbed to death. Uh, you know, she was killed because of what's going on in the Middle East. And there have been threats on Jewish communities just because of the frustration of what's been going on in the Middle East. In my classes, uh, the view is not always as homogeneous as we sometimes assume it is. So when Biden talks about support for Israel, that doesn't always represent the, the, the broader public view. There's a lot of, there's a significant portion of the American polity which does not support America's foreign policy in Israel or in the Middle East. I think that's very important. Very similar to when President Ruto supports Israel, we have a large Muslim community in Kenya and a lot of Kenyans who might not necessarily agree with that position. So I thought I'd, I'd like to mention that. I think the second point is, and which also speaks to my earlier skepticism with future peace in the Middle East, is the radical elements in this right-wing government. We have the National Security Minister, for example, who has really uh, declared that Israel can only be a state once we clear out the country of the Arabs. That's really not a, a fair position to have in terms of governance and coalitions. I think the second element to what uh, Dr. Gizua mentioned was historically Israeli governments have wanted or have turned a blind eye to Hamas because historically they wanted to undermine the moderate positions of the PLO and what has now become the Palestinian Authority. So this monster we call Hamas has actually now become too big to, to be controlled. And it's very important that when we think about the Middle East, we need to think of Hamas, at least in the Arab eyes. Hamas see themselves as freedom fighters, very much like the Mau Mau were in Kenya or the ANC were fighting the, the apartheid government. So it's very important to be able to, to understand the different contexts. And it's not fair to say that the Israelis can only negotiate once Hamas has been eliminated because Hamas is a representative of a large section of Arab public opinion, which is not lockstep with the elites in the Arab world. In other words, the half a million Arabs in the Middle East, in the North Africa and Mid Middle East, really are very sympathetic with Hamas. They may not always accept its tactics, but they see Hamas as the only voice that's actually fighting for the Palestinian cause. So we really need a sensitivity to understand both viewpoints. Yes, Israel has a legitimate right to self-defense, but we cannot blacklist groups that um, agitate for the positions of marginalized populations in the Middle East and just blanketly call them terrorists. I think everyone needs to be brought onto the table, including all constituent groups. And I think Qatar is really working a diplomatic effort in that regard. All right, speaking of Qatar, I just some of the recent events, uh, developments uh, from uh, uh, two US uh, citizens uh, taken hostage by Hamas, uh, Biden uh, posted on, uh, rather the White House uh, released, uh, circulated this release uh, that uh, 
working together. You mentioned Qatar, Professor Monda, and he said, I want to thank the government of Qatar and the government of Israel for partnership in this work, uh, getting, securing the release of these two Americans. Um, also, looking at my news alerts, I saw a couple of days ago that, uh, and this was when, this was uh, on Wednesday, I believe, uh, last week, let me see, Thursday, actually, Israeli strike kills head of Hamas-led National Security mm. Forces, Jadan Mehsen, um, and members of uh, his family in their house, Hamas-aligned news agency reports. So those are just some of the developments. The very last word on this, Prof. Uh, uh, Professor Ol Bilamba. Olive, we, we, we have to understand what's going on uh, and agree with what my colleagues are saying. Um, from the international context, uh, right now, we have a war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, which fall out of that is the element of some of the things we're seeing. And then, on the other hand, we have climate uh, impact. I, I, I teach uh, uh, 50 students from 15 African countries, uh, uh, from west to east to north. They, we all assemble together on Sunday. The issue is very clear. Uh, the U.S. has a special relationship with Israel. Uh, Israel was a creation of the Western countries. Um, a book by Robert Greene, 48 uh, Laws of Power, uh, indicates that what we're looking at is the interest of convenience. But there is a special relationship that develops between countries. Countries are only acting at their best interest, okay? They're not looking at promoting another country. Mm. So when you come to then the Middle East, American centrality, American interest lie in the middle there. The survival of the state of Israel is in, in, intricately connected to the American interest because America forward weapon system are in Israel. Israel is the most powerful country in the Middle East right now. Uh, Israel has the second largest air force in the world when people don't know. And Israel is the only one that ensure that American interest is permanently served in that area. Israel is threatened by Iran. Iran mm. is, is supported by Russia. And for the first time, they're seeing loophole. And the you know, connection between Hamas and I tell you from, uh, uh, from Lebanon, South Lebanon, is even more threat to the state of Israel than Hamas itself. So we have a really powerful enemies that are converging together. Will they test the power of Israel? Well, it has just happened. You know, because Israel is cordoned off. There is no person, no idea that you can imagine penetrate into Israel the way these people have done. And they talk about human ingenuity. Just like 9-11, there was no, no aorta of thinking that somebody can penetrate and go in America and kill that many people on 9-11. It did happen, and it will continue to happen in the future. So the, the, the idea that Israel is so eminently more powerful in the Middle East than anybody else it's going to be tested in the future, and millions of people are going to die. So the time has come to really rethink, rethink about the future of the state of Israel vis-a-vis -vis Palestinian as a really flash point uh, that can end up of, with, the, with the Third World War. And so everybody, including Netanyahu, has to take a retreat right now mm -hmm. and rethink mm -hmm. and come to the idea mm. of Oslo Accord, which will have a two-state solution. All right, I'm just uh, pulling up because uh, yeah. it was mentioned by uh, Professor Monda, the statement uh, by President William Bruto with regard to this yeah. uh, conflict. This is what he had to say on the subject that Kenya joins the rest of the world in solidarity with the state of Israel and, and unequivocally condemn terrorism and attacks on innocent civilians in the country, the people of Kenya, and their government hereby express 
deepest sympathy and send condolences to the families of all victims. We also wish a speedy recovery to the injured. This uh, should have been the 8th of October, I think. Kenya strongly maintains that there exists no justification whatsoever for terrorism, which constitutes a serious threat to international peace and security. All acts of terrorism and violent extremism are abhorrent, criminal and unjustifiable, regardless of the perpetrator or their motivations. The international community must mobilize to bring the perpetrators, organizers, financiers, sponsors, supporters and enablers of these reprehensible criminal acts of terrorism to account and speedily bring them to justice. In consideration of the complex and delicate context of the security situation in Israel-Palestine, Kenya also makes a call for de-escalation of violence and urges all parties to refrain from further military action given its potential to intensify, the, intensify carnage and the suffering of innocent civilians and to trigger heightened tension in the ground and beyond. We are, and this is actually 7th of October, we are profoundly disturbed and civilians continue to be intentionally targeted in this conflict as a consequence of which the number of casualties continues to rise. We therefore call on all parties to respect the rights of civilians and honor their obligations under, under international law. Uh, finally, we take this opportunity to reiterate our firm stand in solidarity with all those calling for the parties to desist from further attacks, promptly effect ceasefire, and embark on a path towards a peaceful resolution of the conflict. All right, I'm going to go at the speed of light. Quickly look at touch on what else is left.